Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Jean Khan, um, originally from United Kingdom and 46 years in New Zealand. I converted uh, to Islam in Birmingham, England 60 years ago, this coming October, alhamdulillah. Um, I was married to my late husband, uh, uh, Salamat Khan, um, for 55 years we were together. And I'd like to talk to you today on the subject of converting to Islam. Below, um, uh, or the points I want to give um, are points to remember when living with uh, or befriending a new brother or sister who has joined us in Islam. And I'd like to emphasise, uh, firstly, the three most important points. Uh, you really must not appear to be critical of these people. Uh, your attitude at this time is vitally important, important to the feelings and, inshallah, later transition of this brother or sister who has, remember, been guided by Allah to follow his path into Islam. In order to achieve this goal, the converts require constructive criticism, criticism uh, in a caring and encouraging way. Do not, therefore, nag them into Islamic practices um, all at once. These are intelligent people who have no doubt already taken a giant step into what is for them, at that time, the unknown world of Islam. It is a completely new way of life as far as they are concerned. Therefore, the pathway to Islam upon which these converts stand poised to take desperately needs your beacon of light and understanding in a way which will come over to them as a breath of fresh air and as a relief from any negative reactions they may have been receiving either from their own relatives and friends or even some other Muslims who sadly cannot imagine what the new convert is suffering. It is impossible for new Muslims to take everything into their head in one easy lesson, Islam. Islam has many aspects uh, which are all a process of growth in a person's life and it is a process which must be allowed to be pondered over in such a way that the person who has converted is allowed to think for himself or herself and travel at their own pace, not rushed into, and thus highly confusing the person concerned. This would indeed be leading them in the wrong direction, even into the area of the Satan, who so much loves to see humankind fail in their endeavours to reach the eternal life in Jannah. In view of my comments here, I think you will agree that it is therefore vital for the new Muslim to have a mentor, someone who is able to live as a Muslim and set the new Muslim an example which he or she can follow and inshallah practice living as an ideal Muslim. A spouse is the most suitable person to adopt this role, but if this is not possible, the new Muslim should attempt to find support from other good Muslims. These Muslims can collectively answer the queries asked by the new Muslim. As the spouse or other mentor teaches, so they are also learning. Practice what you preach. Learn together and grow spiritually together, ideally as a team. And I would like to add a little piece in here to say that personally, my own uh, husband, um, may Allah bless him um, and reward him, um, he taught me very gradually, which meant that I was, I had patience, he had patience with me, therefore I had patience with him when he sort of gently reminded me about something. And uh, anyway. That, that is the ideal way to, to, to actually make it work. Uh, have patience, make allowances, don't expect rapid learning, prayer, fasting, etc. 
Remember, these new Muslims are in the main already adults. They have not grown up with these practices in Islam. Your own born Muslim children have themselves gradually learned their Islamic prayers and fasting as a process of their growing up. These new converts are mostly already grown up. Imagine how difficult it is to bend an already grown tree or plant. This is how it feels with converts and we need all the help we can get in order to adjust. Personally, this is how I tackled the prayer and fasting challenges um, earlier in my life. The way in which I achieved these practices was my own way and it was the way in which I felt I could best succeed as follows. Firstly, I performed one prayer only, daily, the prayer which suited me best, time-wise. However, I took care to ensure that I did not miss this prayer once it was established daily. Secondly, I built up my prayers to two daily, and so on until I had completed the five times daily prayer schedule. From this time to the present day, mashallah, I have still continued my five times daily prayers. My age is now 81 years, alhamdulillah. With regard to fasting in Ramadan, I was actually able to achieve this in 1961. Whilst we were still living in Fiji, and my husband was originally from Fiji, and we, we lived there for eight years, 1958 to 1966, when we came to New Zealand. 1961 was my first attempt at fasting uh, while we were living in Latoka for six months and the climate is a hot, dry heat as opposed to the more humid heat of Suva, the capital city of Fiji, where we lived for the majority of our stay. I was working in Latoka full-time and continued to work full-time for the whole of our eight-year stay in Fiji. And my first day of fasting in 1961 passed very slowly for me as I painfully watched everyone else at work, enjoying their morning tea, their lunch and finally afternoon tea. I'd been rather uncertain about the manageress, who was my immediate boss. She too was English, uh, but I felt she was rather different. However, I quickly learned to change my hastily formed opinion when she came up to me immediately after the other staff had enjoyed their afternoon tea and said, Mrs Khan, go home and rest. Don't break your fast. I graciously and gratefully accepted her kind gesture and returned home early to rest a while. From that day, my opinion of this dear lady just soared when I realised she respected my adopted religion and the purpose of fasting. I felt her action had formed a link which encouraged me to continue upon what was for me at that time a very difficult road with no apparent lighting up of the pathway. It had been my intention at this time in 1961 to try to fast every second day, which I did. And this way, I completed my first fasting month in Ramadan. Afterwards, I continued to fast each year during this lunar month of Ramadan, most years making all or the majority of the fasting days. As some, way, some years were disastrous when I had to actually miss the fast, but, you know, there were always people around would say, oh, don't worry, you will have many more years to continue to fast in Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, they were correct. Those many more years were experienced by me when I completed the whole month of Ramadan. Uh, there are three tips I would like to give here about fasting. Complete your early morning meal with an apple. It will help you to feel less thirsty. Do not eat fish at this early morning meal. This will make you feel more thirsty. Chapatis, for example, 
Indian bread are much more sustaining than what we know as sliced bread. Try it. During the month of Ramadan each year, we Muslims are required to display a great deal of patience.